day to pass a non-binding resolution showing support for Ukraine and warning Russia about what could happen if it invades Ukraine. With me now is someone involved in both those efforts, New Jersey Democratic Senator Bob Menendez, chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, it's great to see you. A lot of big developments today on the Ukraine situation. Russia expelling the deputy U.S. chief of mission to Moscow. Reports of shelling in eastern Ukraine. The White House saying Russia is actually increasing its troops in the border, not decreasing them. Uh, what are you hearing? Well, uh, Jose, from all accounts, it seems that uh, Vladimir Putin is headed towards, uh, towards conflict instead of diplomacy. It seems that not only has he not removed troops from the Ukrainian border, but has added several thousand troops to it. He's built a bridge over one of the rivers that is abutting uh, Ukraine. Uh, and uh, in addition to all of that, it seems that his troops are being uh, put into attack positions. Uh, and so uh, what happened uh, in the eastern part of Ukraine is uh, appears to be another false flag operation where Russian uh, troops uh, or uh, troops that are, uh, you know, uh, given a, a different status in terms of what they look like, but they're Russian troops, ultimately create an attack uh, against uh, uh, Ukrainians in that part of the section to draw uh, Ukrainians uh, into a conflict and then to have the Russians to respond to it. So we've seen uh, we've seen uh, this picture several times. This is Putin, uh, you know, 101. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, I, I am uh, getting more and more concerned that uh, the window for diplomacy is being shut by Putin and he has uh, moving forward uh, with a real uh, uh, would be a tragic mistake for the Ukrainians, but also a tragic mistake uh, for Russia. So, so Senator, the, the sanctions package before Russia makes any move is pretty much moot, right? So what is it that the Senate and uh, you all should or could be doing right now? Well, uh, two days ago, uh, the majority and minority leader of the Senate joined by the 10 uh, chairs and uh, ranking members of the National Security Committees put out a strong statement of bipartisanship in support of Ukraine's territorial integrity, sovereignty, uh, assistance, both lethal and non-lethal, and committed to crushing sanctions against Russia if it invades. Uh, today, as we speak, uh, Senator Shaheen and Rob Portman, the Democrat and the Republican, uh, supported by myself and the ranking member, have a resolution for the broader uh, members of the Senate uh, to also express themselves on that. And so the bottom line is we stand ready uh, to support Ukraine. We have been sending it lethal uh, defensive uh, weapons. We have uh, the administration has supported it financially with a billion dollar loan guarantee. It has coordinated the international community in, in a way that I haven't seen in some time. And I think where you know, Putin has miscalculated, especially for the long term, uh, is that now Europe is seeking to diversify its energy resources instead of depend upon Russia. Um, you know, NATO has more than thousands of troops along its eastern border, which he never wanted, but has only happened because of the threat he's created to Ukraine. Uh, NATO is stronger today in terms of its commitment as an alliance. And, uh, you know, uh, the U.S.-European uh, uh, alliance, transatlantic uh, alliance is stronger today. I think everything that he has done has worked against uh, what he supposedly doesn't want to see. Senator, you're a keen student of, of history. Uh, do you see any parallels with Putin 2022 with any other times in our recent history? Well, I take two takeaways, and that is that in, uh, in 2008, when George Bush uh, opened the door to the possibility to the countries of Georgia and Ukraine to have a long-term process to uh, enter NATO, uh, Putin went crazy and in 2008 uh, in, invaded Georgia uh, and took significant provinces uh, of it. Uh, in 2014, when the Ukrainians moved closer to European, uh, the European Union, uh, he invaded and uh, annexed Crimea. The response of the West um, was weak and he understood that I can do this and get away with it. And, and what I say about this moment is we cannot have a Munich moment. Uh, we can't uh, return to, uh, you know, 1938 and uh, when Neville Chamberlain uh, said, mm -hmm. let's give Czechoslovakia to Hitler, uh, thinking that would end his desires. 
this this is the same. Uh, Putin will not stop for so long as he thinks he can get away with it and suffer little consequences. That's why I authored the mother of all sanctions bill. That's why I'm still going to work with our Republican colleagues to get to such a package. That's why I know the president is ready to levy it uh, and to get international uh, cooperation to do so. Senator here home, you're also a member of the Senate Finance Committee, which is holding a hearing at this hour on customer service challenges at the IRS. I think that customer service and the IRS are sometimes contradictory terms. But right in the middle of tax season, taxpayers are having more trouble reaching the IRS as the agency has a big staff reduction in recent years. What needs to be done to change this? Well, uh, the IRS is a agency that particularly since the U.S. taxpayer uh, depends upon it both to meet its obligations and to get its refunds, uh, ultimately has to work efficiently. Uh, and it's not. That's why I've led over six letters from the Senate Finance Committee, the most recent one, with 210 members from both parties and both houses uh, to say, look, we expect the IRS to do what every taxpayer expects it to do. Number one is uh, open the mail, uh, process returns, and answer the phones. Uh, and, and that should be fundamental. We know that, of course, during the pandemic, uh, there was an accumulation of backlog, but that backlog has to be uh, you know, eliminated. There has to be processing on a timely fashion. Uh, there is a claim by the IRS they need uh, up-to-date uh, technology to be able to meet that challenge. Uh, certainly, the Congress should do that. But at the end of the day, I appreciate the hard work of many IRS uh, agents that are working really hard. But the, the leadership needs to move it uh, into a point in which the backlog is cleared, the mail is answered, uh, returns are processed. People should get their refunds when there's one due to them. Uh, in a timely fashion, and they should be able to get the phone answered when they have a question. Senator, finally, Anameli Ramos Gonzalez, Cuban art professor and activist, was barred yesterday uh, to, uh, on boarding a plane from Miami to Havana uh, by the Cuban government. Uh, this happens during the week that new trials in Cuba are being carried out, these sham trials where young people are sentenced to 10 and 20 years in prison for participating in the July 11th peace movement. What is going on, Senator? Well, it is a continuing reality of the brutality uh, of uh, the Cuban regime. Uh, these are uh, Cuban citizens uh, and nationals who ultimately just want to peacefully try to create change in their country. Uh, and the response is the heavy handedness uh, of the state, uh, the use of uh, show trials, uh, the imprisonment of people simple be simply because of their peaceful protest. Uh, and the regime uh, is ultimately, um, you know, convinced that the discontent of its people uh, can lead to the type of unrest that can create change. And it will continue to clamp down. And it's just my hope that beyond the United States, the international community uh, stops coddling uh, the regime and starts demanding from it uh, the respect of human rights and democracy that every citizen of the world desires and deserves. Senator Bob Menendez, it's always a pleasure to, to see you. Thank you for your time this morning. Great to be with you.